All right, on this intro, I'm going to do something a little bit different because it is such a messed up intro. I'm going to show Mike's face as I read it. Okay. Because he has no idea what we're doing. None whatsoever. You ready for this? Let's go for it. We have a doozy of an episode for you today. Catherine the Cannibal Aussie Knight, who murdered her partner, skinned him, and cooked his head with the intention of feeding it to his own children. That story and more today on Two Murder Morons. This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and murder scenes. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce comedy while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. My name is Andy, and sitting across from me is my buddy Mike. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> and this is Two Murder Morons. Sounds like a doozy. It, it is. Yeah. What did you think of that intro? I like that. You were kind of, you were pretty like... Well, yeah. Oh, it's kind of a look kinda, here. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you, most people would give that kind of look. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this this I mean, one... It's like, you know, saying, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's like... It's like a t- it's like we're having tuna fish today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did. We are doing a true crime podcast. True. We are going to get into yeah. some sick shit. At some yeah, point. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not like it's anything that, you know, would bother me. It's like, I mean, something, you know. It's just this woman is out there in left field. Yeah. I mean, obviously. she's. Yeah. I just cannot wait to get into this one because <laughs> you're. You know what's funny about this, <laughs> actually, and I, I, I'm trying. I'm not. I don't want to steal your thunder. Okay, but I feel like when we start talking about the relationships that this woman had before we got into the murder stuff, you're going to be like, "This is the type of woman I would go after." You would, yeah. You know, she's broke then. What? <laughs> she <laughs> broken, needs broke. fixed. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, and, yeah. and you definitely your type. Some of these. Now, just so we're clear, not talking about my current relationship. No, no, no. I'm very no, no. happy. I know your past ones. But yes, like there are some dudes who stick around through some shit that she does that is like, even I am like, dude, what are you doing? And I've stuck around through some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, you have. Oh, maybe that's why this one like pulls at my heartstrings when I read this story. Because I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like bringing back old, old times. Like maybe I should text her. See what she's doing. See how she is. See if she needs support, you know? True. Yeah. I'm sure that would go well. Well, this is her. There she is. Well, she's a... She's a looker. She has a high blood pressure. Um, Maybe. I I don't know. She's very red in the face. 100% a drinking problem. Oh, okay. 100%. So that explains the the red. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. She's a little homely. She is. She is. Uh, Before we jump into the story, real quick, I just want to remind everybody, if you are listening to this show, like Apple Podcasts, some random podcast player, because it's available everywhere, but if you found us and you've been listening, just know that we are also a video podcast. So when we're talking about, oh, look at this. Yeah. Look at this chick. Doesn't she look? And you're like, well, how? That's bullshit. I have a podcast and they're not, you know, it's because we're also a video podcast. So if you want to watch... And YouTube. see what we're talking about. Yep. YouTube, Spotify. Yep. You can watch the video version on either one of those. Just wanted to throw that out there because whenever we get into like, <laughs> I <laughs> realized like, because I was listening. I know this sounds terrible, but I do listen to our own podcast. I do too. Part of me is like, I'm a perfectionist. So I want to yeah. make sure they're in some weird sounding, shit, you know, I'm making sure it sounds good. Yeah. And I like the number of times we're like, look at this guy, man, why is he wearing that shirt? And I'm thinking like all of the random people that are like, these ass have to stop yeah. talking about yeah. what they're looking at because it's a podcast. Exactly. And also, when you're on those uh, four formats, make sure you subscribe and like. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Subscribe, like. like whatever. Smash it, if, whatever. If there's a notification bell, click that. Yep. Whatever the platform calls it. Yeah, please. Please do that for us. We would, that would appreciate that it. That would help out. 
What do you say? Should we jump right into Catherine Knight? Jump right into this one. Yeah. All right. Well, Well, this here again is Catherine Knight. She's born and raised in an unconventional and dysfunctional family environment. Shocker. Shocker. Right? Explains by the alcoholism. Yes. Her mother, Barbara Ruffin, yes, spelled R-O-U-G-H, like rough. Okay. A-N, Ruffin. Ruffin. uh, Had been married to Jack Ruffin and lived with him in the small town of Aberdeen, which is in New South Wales, okay. Hunter Valley, in Australia. Okay. So when I tried the English accent on an er- earlier episode and it came out Australian, I yeah. should be doing like the good day, mate. That's, yeah, yeah. this applies this now. Way, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is what okay. you do it to. Um, you probably do, still be shit at it. Right. <laughs> the, the two, <laughs> thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Um, so her mom and, and dad, they had four sons before um, her mom began an adulterous relationship with a gentleman by the name of Ken Knight, a friend and co-worker of uh, her then husband. Okay. Okay. Friend of her husband? Yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it was one of those. Yeah, I no longer friends. <laughs> I would assume not. Yeah. I would assume not. Uh, local backlash forced Barbara and Ken to move to Moree, M-O-R-E-E, oh. Australia. Yeah. None of her sons went with her. Shocker. I probably pissed off at her. Yeah, I mean, if the whole town's pissed at her. Right. I'm sure the kids weren't happy. Like, I, this is what... Small towns. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're going to start screwing somebody else around behind your marriage or whatever, yeah. like, be in a big city or some Because yeah. it's a small get, town. Yeah, get away. Yeah. And, and everybody's going to hate you. Yeah. Like, dumb decision making here. Yep. So none of the sons went with her when she moved. The two eldest boys continued to reside with their father, and the two younger sons were sent to be raised by an aunt in Sydney. Okay. Well, good for them. Barbara had four additional children with Ken, including twin girls born in 1955. Catherine was one of these twin girls. In 1959, when Knight was four, Jack Ruffin died, and his two older sons who had been living with him moved in with Barbara and Ken. Okay. All right. Can we follow? I know there was a lot of information. Yeah. Oh, said. Jesus. Pretty quick. Wow. So that's that's her um, kind of messed up childhood background. Hey, okay. we're the monkeys. Now, this guy, this is her first husband. This is her. Yeah. I don't know if you yeah, can tell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I should probably show them. There um, we go. Looking at him. So this is uh, Catherine and her first husband, David Kellett. Kellett. And this is a photo from their wedding day. Wow. He went all out. And as you can tell, I th- think judging by his red face, he is also a raging alcoholic, which is why they probably got along so great. Uh, judging by his face, I don't think he was really excited about getting married. He does not look no. thrilled at all. No. Well, you're going to find out why here in a second. Yeah, true. Here's where the kind of my history comes in. So Catherine first met co-worker David Kellett in 1973. Okay. Kellett engaged in heavy drinking which stemmed from two traumatic incidents at his previous railway job. Railway job. Railway. Uh, First, when his best friend was killed in front of him in a shunting accident. Hmm. Shunting. I believe it's when the two railroad cars are connected. Oh, like I think you get caught. Yeah, not good. Yeah, obviously not, no. And later he rescued injured occupants of a school bus in Kempsey, which had been struck by a train, killing six children. Jesus. So this dude right here has been through some shit. Yeah, he's seen some stuff. He's seen his best friend split in half and crushed, and he's seen all these dead kids on a school bus that he's trying to pull to safety. Yeah. So I get why he's drinking at this point. He eventually loses his job due to deteriorating behavior and performance, but he soon got work at the nearby Aberdeen Abattoir. Now, here's today's vocabulary lesson. Do you know, Mike, in Australia, what is an abattoir? I really have no idea. Would you like the spelling? Yeah. A-B-A-T-T-O-I-R. So I think I'm saying it right. Abattoir. Okay. Sounds French. Doesn't sound Australian. So what is an abattoir? Tuar. This would be a meat pot processing plant. Oh, yeah. This is a slaughterhouse. Okay, yeah. Okay. Sounds like one. Yes. So he begins working at the slaughterhouse. Well, at least they give it a neat name. Yeah. I, I, I should have looked up like the origin. Like, why do they call it that? I don't know. 
Maybe somebody knows. Yeah. You know, let us know. So often, Kellett, our buddy here, he'd get into fights, and Knight would step in and back him up with her fists. So this this girl here, she's a scrapper. Ain't nobody messing with my man. Oh, yeah. Or she gonna f*** him up. F*** him up. Um, in Aberdeen, um, she was well known for physically threatening anyone who upset her. Knight married Kellett in 74, and at um, at her request, so he didn't. Obviously. <laughs> Can you see it? He didn't propose. She it, said, we need to get married, and he was probably scared shitless to say no. Probably. So, all right, they get married. Yeah. They arrive at their wedding service on a motorcycle with a very intoxicated Kellett. <laughs> it's our, yeah, our boy yeah, here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And as soon as they arrived... Catherine's mother gave him some advice, and this is what she said. Quote, the old girl, I'm sorry, this is Kellett saying what Yeah, Catherine mom. He said, the old girl, meaning Knight's mother. Mother-in-law. Said to me, watch out. You better watch this one or she'll f***ing kill you. Wow. Stir her up the wrong way or do the wrong thing and you're f***ed. Don't ever think of playing up on her, meaning like cheating yeah, on her. Yeah, yeah. She'll f***ing kill you. And that was her mother talking. Uh, she told me she's got something loose. She's got a screw loose somewhere. It's nice to hear from your mom. Can I just can't imagine on the wedding day, bride's mom coming up and being like, she's going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I'd be like, <laughs> could you tell me that like an hour ago? You know, like maybe it pre-warned me. Or like when we were dating so I get yeah. the f- out of here yeah. before she's all attached and everything. Yeah. Oh. Jesus. So this is, this is you. It, it gets even better on their wedding night. After their wedding, Knight tries to strangle Kellett. She tries to f- kill him. Night one, they've been married four hours. She's oh, so trying it's more to like a him. sexual thing. Well, she later explained that the reason she was trying to kill him was that he fell asleep after only having sex with her three times. <laughs> Well, hmm. so, it's not that he fell asleep and they didn't have sex. They had sex three times. He falls asleep after that. And she's pissed that there isn't a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time. Cause she hasn't been pleased yet. She has not been. Yeah. Well, look at him. He's drunk. I can only imagine what that sex yeah. was like. For yeah. Them. Well, I'm sure she was drunk too. <laughs> this is nuts. Uh, the marriage proved particularly violent. And on one occasion, a heavily pregnant, so he gets her pregnant. He sticks in there. Yeah. A heavily pregnant knight burned all of Kellett's clothing and shoes before hitting him across the back of the head, back of the head with a frying pan. Simply because he had arrived home late from a darts competition after reaching the finals. Damn. I mean, he was, I mean it's like he was out horning around. Right. Well, I think that's what she thinks he's well, doing. Well, she should have went to the pub. Right. Uh, in fear for his life, Kellett fled before collapsing in a neighbor's house and was treated for a severely fractured skull. Wow. Police wanted to charge Knight, but she changed her behavior to uh, ingratiating Kellett? I don't know what that word means. These are big words, and we're morons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, oh, man. she talked him into dropping the charges. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think probably more threatened him into dropping the charges. I would say it's, yeah. Yeah. It's probably the truth, but. He didn't have much of a choice. He decides he's not going to file charges. Of course not. Yeah, he wants to live. He wants to live another day. In May of 1976, shortly after the birth of their first child, Melissa Ann, Mm. Kellett left Knight for another woman and moved to Queensland. Wow. Apparently unable to cope with the abuse. The next day, Knight was seen pushing her new baby in a stroller down the main street violently throwing it from side to side. She was admitted to St. Elmo's hospital in Tamworth, where she was diagnosed with postnatal depression and spent several weeks recovering. After being released, Knight placed two month old Melissa on a railway line shortly before the train was due to come through. She then stole an ax, went into town and threatened to kill several people. Oh, an unsheltered man, a homeless man, yeah, um, known to the district as Old Ted, 
who was foraging near the railway line, line found and rescued Melissa before the train could run her over. And by all accounts, this was just minutes before the train passes. Yeah. Knight is arrested again, taken to St. Elmo's Hospital, but apparently she recovered and signed herself out the following day. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm fine. Well, yeah, it's all good. two hours. Yeah. Well, not even that. 24. <laughs> A few days after this. Beat detention. <laughs> yeah, ID. Yeah. A few days after this, Knight slashed the face of a woman with one of her knives and demanded she drive her to Queensland to find Kellett. Uh oh. Oh, well, damn, he's dead. Yeah. Yep. The uh -oh. woman escaped after they stopped at a service station. However, by the time police arrived, Knight had taken a young boy hostage and was threatening him with a knife. This just keeps yeah, snowballing. Yeah, why, why, why him? <laughs> because he was there, I guess. She was disarmed when police attacked her with brooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just envisioning the scene. She's a witch. Get the broom. Get the broom. <laughs> and she's admitted to another psychiatric hospital where Knight told the nurses she had intended to kill the mechanic at the service station because he had repaired Kellett's car in the past. So she ain't only going after Kellett. She's going after him. She's going after anybody who had yeah. any contact with the man in his entire life. Yep. Um, and she was upset because he fixed his car that allowed him to leave her and leave town because yeah. his car is now but fixed. But he didn't leave in his Yeah, I mean, he's obviously he had a chance to get to his car. She said that she then intended to kill both her husband and his mother when she arrived in Queensland. Oh, man. When now, okay, here's – don't make fun of me because this is straight up me now, dude. Okay. <laughs> when police informed Kellett of this incident and of her – trying to kill the mechanic, his fixed car, whatever. Yeah. He left his girlfriend and moved back to Aberdeen with his mother to support Knight. Oh. She's off her rocker, so let's move back. She yeah. just said she was going to kill me and my mom, so let's move back in with her. She needs our help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't threats. You know what my mom calls it? White Knight Syndrome. Oh, Yeah. She says I have white knight syndrome. I don't know if that's a real thing. I wonder why. But that's what my mom says. So I always have to go for the people that are. Yeah, you do. Well, because I'm trying minus to help this them. one. Well, not you, finally. I figured it out at age forty two. God. But yeah. Yeah, your last one. Woo. <laughs> Man. <laughs> So uh, they moved back to support her. Knight's released on August 9th, 1976 from the psychiatric hospital into the care of her mother-in-law and Kellett. Okay. Um, they all moved to Ipwich, a city west of Brisbane, where she obtained a job in the Dinmore Meat Works. So now she's working. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. I hope you took the uh, skill out of the house. <laughs> on March 6th, 1980. They have another daughter, <sighs> Natasha Marie. Man has not learned yet, has he? He hasn't. And now Knight leaves Kellett. Oh, yeah. And moves first to her parents' house in Aberdeen, then to a rented house in Musselbrook. Although she returned to work at the abattoir, she injured her back the following year and went on disability pension. Since she no longer needed to rent accommodation close to her work, the government gave her housing in uh, Aberdeen. Well, I mean, sounds like a nice system. <laughs> I know, right? Go crazy, put your baby on yeah. the train tracks, try and kill people, slash women's faces. Yeah. Have a free house. Have a free house. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to Australia. Let's talk about some other relationships. Oh. That Miss Knight is now getting involved in. Okay. She's a BTA. Uh, first up, we have David Saunders. Oh. So Knight met 38-year-old Minor. David Saunders, minor as in like, yeah, cool minor, not minor like twelve years old. Yeah, minor. Okay, uh, she meets Saunders in 1986. A few months later, he moved in with her and her daughters. Although he kept his old apartment in Scone, Knight soon became jealous regarding what he did when she was not around him, and would often throw him out. So she's got some jealousy issues. Yeah, he would move back to his apartment, where she would inevitably follow and beg him to return. Return. In May of 1987, she cut the throat of his two-month-old dingo pup in front of him, grabbed his damn dog, slit its throat. Wow. 
<sighs> for no more reason than as an example of what would happen if he ever had an affair. So, <laughs> I mean, the guy could, I mean, you know, can you like point out like, like an illustration in, on, in a book? <laughs> or, or, or you can't just say, if you cheat on me, I'll kill you. Yeah. You got to hold the dude's dog and be like, you ever cheat on me? And then literally yeah. cut the dog's throat. Yeah, exactly. What the f-ing dog do? Let out. Probably. <sighs> I meant to her. Well, to deserve, you know. Well. <laughs> and then what did she do after that? She's working her way. Right. She's working up to it. Yeah. After cutting the dog's throat, she knocks him unconscious with a frying pan. Oh, this seems. To- <laughs> weapon of choice. Yes. Weapon of choice is yeah. a frying pan. In June 1988, she gives birth to a third daughter, God Sarah. Damn, man. Which prompted Saunders to put a deposit on a house. Knight paid off the deposit when her workers' compensation came through in 1989. But, I mean, hey, at least she helped out with her back pay. I guess. <laughs> Is that the positive we're getting out of this? Well, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, at least he's got his house paid off. True. True. I mean, he may have a concussion, but. <laughs> a fractured skull. Yeah, fractured skull. And his, do- yeah. his dog's gone, but. Man, he can't see straight. <laughs> yeah, and he's got eye issues and, Yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody, please pardon the interruption while I take a moment to talk about Trailblazer Threads. Now, this is a company that my girlfriend and I started. It's outdoor apparel for RVers, hikers, fishermen, anybody who loves the outdoors. So if you're in the market for a t-shirt or a hoodie to wear on your next adventure, give us a try. Trailblazerthreads.com. Get 10% off with promo code 2MM10. Again, that's trailblazerthreads.com. So this house that they have. Let me tell let me tell you how Knight decorates it. She decorates the house throughout with animal skins, skulls, horns, rusty animal traps, leather jackets, old boots, machetes, rakes, pitchforks. And it is said that no space, including the ceilings, was left uncovered in some kind of dead animal or weaponry. Where are your signs, dude? Like why are you making that face? Well, the signs were, well, the signs were way before that. Yeah. <laughs> so after an argument with Saunders, in which she hits him in the face with an iron before stabbing him in the abdomen. That's probably where his dingo is. The skull. With, yeah, it's on the wall. Yeah. Oh, fluffy. Damn. Damn it. All right, go on. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. So she she hits him with an iron, stabs him with a pair of scissors in the stomach. He finally moves back to Scone. What I'm do I? The f- out of here. What do I? But when he later returned home to Aberdeen, he found she had cut up all his clothes. Oh, God. Saunders took a long service leave and went into hiding. I would, too. Yeah. Knight tried to find him, but no one admitted to knowing his whereabouts. Several months later, Saunders returned to see his daughter and found that Knight had gone to the police and had told them that she was afraid of him. So now we're doing the role yeah, reversal. The whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had issued her an apprehended violence order, an AVO, against him. Basically, pr- Australia's protection, protection yeah, order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's got this P. He gets hit with a frying pan, stabbed in the abdomen, dog gets killed, but he's got the PO against yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to do anything for him. Now, another short, here's another short little, after Saunders, we've got John Chillingsworth. Okay. So in 1991, Knight became pregnant again (laughs) by 43-year-old former abattoir co-worker, John Chillingsworth. Now, to his credit, he he didn't know her yet. He didn't know all this past right. stuff, I hope. <laughs> right. If there was only a place we could go yeah. where this stuff was honestly reported on to be like, well, let me s- yeah, let me see what's up with this. Oh, God. <laughs> so she gives birth the following year to a boy named Eric. Their relationship lasted three years before she left him for a man she had been having an affair with for some time by the name of John Price. Okay. And this right here. Is that John? That's John. That's her and John together. Yeah, John looks like an alcoholic, like an alcoholic yeah. too. Got the beer in the hand. She got the Tweety Bird shirt on, smoking a cigarette. You sure it's a shirt, not a? It looked. Is that a? Is that a one piece? 
I don't, it looks like just a long maybe yeah hoodie you're right. or something maybe. I hope it's just a shirt. But he either way though he doesn't look too f-ing thrilled to be in this relationship either, does no, he? No, no, none of the men have looked too thrilled. That's why he's probably got a beer in his hand. Right. <laughs> he looks like he's ready to pass out. He's leaning all sideways. Yeah, he's- Pulling that building up. All right. So John Charles Thomas Price, who's born in 1955. He's the father of three children when Knight began an affair with him. Okay. Um, I was thinking. But I, I well, he's an alcoholic. I mean, yeah, you get it where you can get it, I guess. Are I you guess. that age? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Um, his reputation was that he was a, quote, terrific bloke. So he's oh, well liked well, in the community. I guess he's a good people. Yeah. He's liked by everyone who knew him. His okay. own marriage had ended in 1988. Right. While his two year old daughter had remained with his former wife, the two older children lived with him. Oh. Okay. So he's, kids like him. Yeah. Good, good dad. So it's not like he just bailed and, yeah. you know. Yeah. If he or not like that. Yeah. Price was well aware of Knight's violent reputation as oh. she moved into his house in 1995. If he, you were well, aware of it. Why is she there? <laughs> I don't know how he couldn't have known everything. This says he's well aware. Well, of I mean, past. if he's a coworker, he probably does know a lot of stuff. True. I mean, why would you move her into your house? Because guys are stupid. <laughs> we are. We are. You're right. His children reportedly liked her. Oh, dear God. He was making a lot of money working in the local mines, and apart from violent arguments, at first, life was a bunch of roses. Okay. In 1998, Knight and Price fought over his refusal to marry her. So she's wanting to get hitched again. He's like, nope. Nope. I'm know. done. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. We're having fun, but yep. not, do, not taking that step. In retaliation, she videotaped items he had allegedly stolen from work <laughs> and sent the tape to his boss. And although the items were out-of-date medical kits that he had scavenged from the company's dumpster, oh, dear God. Price is fired from his job that he held for 17 years because of this. So you, you're you not going to marry me? I'm going to get your ass fired. Yep. That's how she works. Uh, that's, yeah. That wow. same day, he kicked her out, and she returned to her own home. While news of what she had done spread through the town, um, a few months later, Price restarted the relationship. Why? Why? <laughs> Although his one condition now is he refused to allow her to move in with him. Oh, so apparently yeah. this is a week and hang out and bang, but I'm not, you can't move in with. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Friends with benefits. Uh, I apparent, apparently. Yeah. You must've really needed it. Needed it. Uh, apparently. The, uh, the fighting became even more frequent, and most of his friends would no longer have anything to do with him while they remained together. I wonder why. So this is how bad this got. Is he's at that point where his friends are like, dude, yeah, if you're going to keep seeing this chick, we don't want to be friends with you. Mm-hmm. That's bad. Yeah. That's bad. And on that note, do you know what time it is? Oh. <laughs> uh, get everybody dizzy. Do we have anybody? We do not have anybody, Mike. I hate to be a disappointment to you. Oh, man. I was really hoping to spin. Maybe I might get... I know. Maybe I might have got lucky. I'm getting itchy Want to spin the wheel of death. Yeah. Well... Let's, let's see, Mike. Let's try and get some people to sign up. Okay. So those of you that are hearing us for the first time, the wheel of death. It's way over there. I can't get it. It's, yeah. a, it's a wheel of fortune looking wheel. Yeah. We got stuff on there like hats, t-shirts, gift cards at our merch store. Free buy me a coffee membership. Yes, yes. Uh, and basically, the way this works is you enter to play on our website. Um, we do have to say that YouTube does not sponsor this whatsoever. Not, not one bit. We are solely responsible for the game and its prizes. Yep. Um, but if you go to our website, to murdermorons.com, we'll put it up on the screen, um, slash wheel of death. There's a little entry form there. You just put your name, your phone number, your email. And then once we get people that enter, which I'm enthusiastically waiting on more people to play because I really want to play it. Yeah, we've had one. We've had two. Oh, two. That's right. How about the other one? Yeah, we play this with our Buy Me a Coffee yeah. people, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, we will draw names during every episode, and if we draw your name, we'll have you FaceTime in. You get to be on the show. 
pick one of us to just spin for you. Yeah. Don't pick Mike. Don't pick Mike. Um, and whatever it lands on, we send to you or yeah, sign you up for. Yep. So remember, twomurdermorons.com slash wheel of death to sign up for that. And you get a shirt if you land on the uh, wheel of death. Oh, yeah. There's a special wheel of death special t-shirt. Wheel of death t-shirt. I survived the wheel of death. Only yep. way to get it is by playing. That's right. That's the only prize we've given away. It's the only prize we've, we've given out. We've had one person land on death. Yep. Which Ted Bundy comes in and kills you. Yep. And one person, person land on the ice. Yep. Yeah. We'll get more. Yeah. People are bound to sign up for this. Oh, show. yeah. I think so. I mean, why not? Right? Yeah. You get to be on our Jumbotron. Yep. You get free stuff. Get free. Well, maybe. Unless maybe. you land on death. Well, yeah, it depends. It depends. Pick me. <sighs> yeah. Don't pick yeah, me. Don't pick How me. many? What were we up to? Seven times? Seven times. That you spun death in a row. Yeah. And just to put this in perspective, and it's not on the same show either. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's like twenty spaces on the wheel. Four of them are death spaces. Everything else is a prize. Yeah. So like, the chances of landing on a death incredibly low. Yeah. Like four out of twenty, right? Mm-hmm. Like a one fourth, less than a fourth of a chance, right? You, you would think. But you seven times in a row landed on death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so don't pick me if you sign up. And yeah, don't pick you. me. Don't yeah. pick Mike. Yeah, it's yeah. simple. Simple. Pick me and we'll get you a prize. That's right. Maybe. <laughs> and then I'll probably end up. You'll probably hitting death all the time. Right. Yeah. I'll be the jackass. All right. Continuing on. Any guesses of what this could be? Uh, her weapon's <laughs> a choice. Oh, I cannot wait to tell you about this. Oh, my God. Does that what she cook people in? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That is body. I, yep. Oh, God. That's the cooking pot. That's the actual crime That's scene. Body photo. fluid right there. Yeah. So we've made it to February of 2000. Okay. A series of assaults on Price culminated with Knight stabbing him in the chest again. Like we say, it like it's the first time. This is not the first time yeah. she's stabbed this yeah. dude. Poor guy. Finally fed up. This, this is the straw. Finally, finally. finally he's done. He kicks her out of his house. Oh, wow. On February 28th, he stopped at the Scone Magistrate's Court on his way back on his way home from work and took out a restraining order in an attempt to keep her away from both himself and his children. Okay. That he's, afternoon. But he's the problem. Right. <laughs> so she says. Yeah. Right. That afternoon, Price told his co-workers that if he did not come to work the next day, it would be because Knight had murdered him. He literally tells his coworkers, "If I don't show up, she f-ing killed me." I mean, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. Despite their pleas to him that he should not return home, which is what I'd tell him, mm-hmm. he stated that he was afraid Knight would kill his children if he did not go home. So he's going home to protect the kids. Yeah, I get it. Price arrived home to find that Knight, although not there herself had sent the children away for a sleepover at a friend's house. Oh. So he comes home to an empty house. And I guess somehow figures out that she has told the kids, to, oh, go have a yeah, sleepover. Have a good, yeah, go have a sleepover. Yeah. Mm, why is she, My gift to you. Why is she getting the kids out of the house? What's up with that? Yeah. Mm. Uh, he then spent the evening with his neighbors before <sighs> returning home and going to bed at 11 p.m. Maybe he should have stayed all night with the neighbors. He should have stayed somewhere far f- away yeah, from yeah. there is what he should have done. Yeah. Um, earlier that day, Knight had bought new black lingerie. Oh. Because she looked so good in it. I bet she did. Man. And had videotaped all her children while making comments, which have since been interpreted as a crude will. So she like made a videotape to her children. Well, she's wearing the new. Yes. That oh. was taken as, I guess, some kind of, I want you to have this. I want you, to, like a will. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting. She later arrives at Price's house while he's sleeping and sat watching television in his house for a few minutes before having a shower. Now, how this, he must have been drinking, because how the, how do you not been... wake up when someone comes in, watches TV, and takes he's, a shower? He's drunk. Yeah. She then woke Price. They had sex. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, all right. After which he fell asleep. So let me get this straight. This woman has 
stabbed you repeatedly, hit you over the head with things, threatened to kill you, mm-hmm. filed a false police report on you to get a restraining order. Mm-hmm. You go to work and tell your coworkers, if I don't show up tomorrow, bitch has killed me. You go home. She comes in your house and says, let's have sex. And you're like, yay. Yay. Yeah. Let's do it. And then you do it and yeah. you fall asleep while she's still, I guess he thought everything was hunky dory. Well, obviously he didn't know about the first, first guy. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's probably wanting him to perform a little bit more than just once. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was the whole issue with this guy. Could have been. 6 a.m. the next day, the neighbor became concerned because Price's car is still in the driveway. Notices he hasn't left for work yet. Mm-hmm. And when he did not arrive at work, his employer sent a worker oh. to his house to see what was wrong. Because he was in there the day before saying, yeah, yeah. if I don't show yeah, up, I, I'm dead. Show up, yeah. Maybe they should have called the police, though. Probably, probably should have. <laughs> to send an officer out to the house. But, Yeah. Both Both the neighbor and the worker, they meet each other. They have their little in this talk and they go and they try knocking on his door in his bedroom window. They alerted police after noticing blood on the front door. Breaking down the back door, police found Price's body with Knight's coat with Knight comatose from taking a large number of pills. So she's still there. Okay. And she's passed out from taking a bunch of pills. What they discovered was she had stabbed Price with a butcher knife while he was sleeping. Okay. According to the blood evidence, which I am going to post, I can't do it now. (laughs) I can't do it on Facebook because it's graphic crime scene. Yeah. For our Buy Me a Coffee members, though, I'm going to do a post with this crime scene photo. Because there, this place, it looks like The Shining when the elevator door opens. And she was feasting off his innards? Well, we'll, we're, we'll, let's, we'll get there. Okay. We'll no, get there. Just curious. So according to the blood evidence, he awoke and tried to turn the light on before attempting to escape. This is during the stabbing. While Knight chased him through the house, he managed to open the front door and get outside. Almost got away. But he either stumbled back inside or was dragged back into the hallway where he finally died after bleeding out. Later, Knight goes to Aberdeen, withdraws $1,000 from his account at an ATM. His autopsy revealed that he had been stabbed at least 37 times. Jesus. In both the front and back of his body, with many of the wounds extending into the vital organs, Mm -hmm. causing death, obviously. Several hours after Price had died, Knight skinned him, skinned him, hung the skin from a meat hook uh, near the door. She then decapitated Price and cooked parts of his body, including his head, and serving them up with baked potato, carrot, pumpkin, beetroot, zucchini, cabbage, yellow squash, and gravy. (laughs) In two settings at the dinner table, along with notes beside each plate, each having the name of one of Price's children on it. So she cooked him, prepared plates, and was going to feed him to his own children. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. A third meal was thrown out on the back lawn for unknown reasons, and it is speculated that Knight had attempted to eat it, but could not. Couldn't stand the taste. Couldn't stand it. Yeah. Um. Price's head is found in a pot with vegetables. Oh, the kids so, did find it. This is, uh, this is the pot there. Yeah. Uh, the pot was still warm, estimated to be between uh, 104 and 122 degrees Fahrenheit, indicating that the cooking had taken place in the early morning hours. Oh, Sometime yeah. later, Knight arranged his body with the left arm draped over an empty uh, soft drink bottle, And his legs crossed. This was claimed in court to be an act of defilement demonstrating Knight's contempt for Price. Knight had left a handwritten note on top of a photograph of Price and bloodstained and covered with small pieces of flesh. It read. Help me make sense of this. This is what her note (laughs) says. Time got you back, Jonathan, for raping my daughter. You to Beck for Ross for little John 
Now play with little John's <laughs> John Price. The f does that even mean? I guess I accusing have no him idea. Of, of molestation, maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, that, you know, obviously so the accusations in the note were found to be groundless. So yeah. they looked into, okay, was there something going on where he was maybe molesting? No, they said all this was yeah. crazy, crazy woman talking here. Look at that looker there. Yeah. Or she looked a little. So let's talk about her trial really quick. Knight's initial offer to plead guilty to manslaughter was rejected. So she offered to plead guilty to manslaughter. Okay. Which. Uh, uh, yeah. The prosecutor was like, ah, f you. No, yeah. this is nasty. No, this is not manslaughter. She's charged on March 2nd, 2011 with murdering Price. She entered a plea of not guilty. Her trial was um, initially slated for July of 2001, but it was adjourned due to her uh, counsel's illness and it was reset for October 15th, 2001. When the trial commenced, Justice Barry O'Keefe offered the 60 juror prospects the option of being excused due to the nature of the photographic evidence. It's terrifying. I'm telling you, it's terrifying. Uh, yeah, I, I can only imagine. Five of them accepted. Five people said, yeah, this. <laughs> I don't want to look at that. I'm getting out of here. When the witness list was read out uh, to the prospects, several more also dropped out after the jury was impaneled. Knight's attorneys then spoke to the judge, who adjourned to the following day. The next morning, Knight changed her plea to guilty, and the jury was dismissed. It was then made public that Justice O'Keefe had been advised of the plea change the day before. He had adjourned the trial and then ordered a psychiatric assessment overnight to determine if Knight understood the consequences of the guilty plea. Uh, Knight's legal team had planned to defend Knight by claiming amnesia and disassociation, a claim. <laughs> yes, their defense was going to be amnesia and disassociation. Okay. That makes so much sense. A claim, however, supported by most psychiatrists on the case. Oh, okay. Um, although they did consider her sane. So they didn't go as far to say she's insane or not fit to stand trial. They just said that she has amnesia and dissociation. Two psychiatrists concluded that Knight suffered from borderline personality disorder. You uh, think? Really? You think so? Hmm. No reason has ever been given for the guilty plea, and despite giving it, Knight still refused to accept responsibility for her actions. At the sentencing hearing, Knight's lawyers requested that she be excused to avoid hearing some of the facts. You were there, uh, but the application was refused by the judge. When Timothy Lyons took the stand and described the skinning and decapitation, Knight became hysterical and had to be sedated. <laughs> Couldn't live up to what she I guess done. not, I yeah. yeah. I guess once she sobered up and realized what she'd done. <laughs> On November 8th, Justice O'Keefe pointed out that the nature of the crime and Knight's lack of remorse required a severe penalty. He sentenced her to life imprisonment, refused to fix a parole period, and ordered that her papers be marked, quote, definitely never to be released. The first time that this has been imposed on a woman in Australian history. Wow. In June of 06, Knight appealed the life sentence. Okay, yeah, I get it. Claiming that a penalty of life in prison without possibility of parole was too severe for the killing. <laughs> Should have got death. Yeah. Justice Peter McKellen, Michael Adams, and Megan Latham dismissed the appeal in New South Wales Court of Criminal yeah. Appeal in September with Justice McKellen writing in his judgment, quote, this was an appalling crime almost beyond contemplation in a civilized society. Yeah. So Knight, being a pretty princess in prison. I see that. <coughs> looks like a bird. Knight, Knight has been reported to have taken a leadership role amongst the prisoners oh, in okay. Silverwater Women's Correctional Facility. Oh, okay. And a mediator of disputes. Because well, everybody's afraid of her. <laughs> it's it was reported in July of 2017 that to that point, she did not have a record of violence in prison and hadn't received any prison charges. Okay. So she just became the model prisoner. Became the mother of everybody, probably. She became somebody, everybody else's mom. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Finally grew up. Became a role model. <laughs> Can you imagine finding out that your father not only had been killed but that his head had been cooked and prepared for you to eat. Mm -hmm. Like, what do these kids do after this? 
uh, a lot of counseling, I hope. Yeah. Yep. And a good support system. And a lot of family. <laughs> a lot of good, good family. The good side yeah, of yeah. Family. The good side of Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mike, that was Catherine, the Aussie knight. Good woman. What'd you think? <laughs> good yeah, woman. Yeah, good, good woman. I'm kind of thinking about writing her a letter. Yeah, yeah. You, you know? Yeah. Well, hey, boo. Maybe you can fix her. Hey, boo. Yeah. How you doing? You need somebody to talk to? I'm here for you. Yeah, she probably needs somebody to talk to her. Yeah. But then she'd threaten to kick your ass. Well, she, she didn't talk to her. Hit me with a frying pan. She would. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even women are even women are bad, too. Oh, yeah. We've got some baddies. I mean, it's sad to say. Sometimes they just snap. Sometimes they're just... She didn't to snap. Begin. She, yeah. she was born in she was born that way. That, yeah. was, that was her life. Yeah, she's she I think from childbirth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she just, was, she was it was it was ingrained in her to be that way. Yeah. Craziness. Yep. Well, if you enjoyed that episode and you'd like to support the show, head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons. Set it right. Set it right. Set it right. Wow. You can simply buy Mike and I a coffee or you can sign up to be a member for exclusive benefits, including bonus content, bonus episodes. Episodes? We're up to, at the point this is airing, there are five entire bonus episodes already. So if you like this shit and you want to hear more and you don't have to wait until yep. next week, think about becoming a member because you could. there's five episodes there for you to listen to right now. Yep. Um, so head over to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons to learn more got through another one man yep and also oh merch we got merch we got merch show the merch show the merch show the fire merch buy a shirt look at that yeah got our pictures on there two outstanding photos (laughs) two outstanding on the one yeah yeah uh explain that to your friends yeah if you're not into doing the whole like monthly we get it but hey support the show grab a shirt or a hoodie or something just scan that qr code on your screen or again, to murdermorons.com slash merch. Yep. I would like to know, Mike, why is it every time we do an episode, I'm wearing our merch to show it off? And you got I that. wear my hat. That's true. You do wear I the hat. wear it this time, though. You do. Now, uh, so. You're kind of snazzed up tonight. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did it for you. Oh. So that's how we're going to be with you on Valentine's Day. Oh. So uh, it, it's funny because. Uh, um, I like the hat. I like wearing my hat. But the wife's like, you ought to not wear the hat. It covers your face. Like, who wants to really see my face anyway? Oh, uh, I know what she's saying, though. Like, the lighting. Yeah. It gets, you just can't see your yeah, eyes. Yeah. Yeah, we want to see your pretty face, Mike. You know, so, you know, I'm not a big T. I don't wear T-shirts too much. You're a hoodie guy, but it is like 327 degrees at all points in time in our little studio up here. Yeah. So that's yeah, kind of out, yeah. too. I have wore a hoodie up here, and I've sweated my balls off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just haven't got one of our hoodies yet. Hopefully, when we when we finally get the spring and we kick the air on in this bitch, yeah. we'll be yeah, we'll be off to a little bit better. Yeah, well, I'll probably I'll probably wear my hat next time. This is okay. You don't have to. I'm just giving you. I know. Well, still, still I should. I don't like wearing t-shirts because my man boobs show. You are right. And That's why I'm, you got your arms like this. And I'm always like fiddling and trying to pull it out. So yeah. you don't see my. Uh, you're not trying to pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> Something uh, wrong with you. Something yeah, wrong with you, Mike. I know. Well, if you guys are into this kind of shit, you thought this was a good episode, you want to see more, again, don't forget, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, whatever platform you're listening or watching on, whatever they call it, do something on there that pumps that algorithm to get us to more people and yep. so that you get notified when there's a new episode. Correct. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Wow, next Wednesday. Oh, yeah. I need to learn how to talk before we get Not this Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. See you guys. Thank you. Valentine's Day blooper. You look high as a kite. Hey, uh, how come we didn't do it on Wednesday? We could have done a Valentine's Day special. Well, I kind of figured someone would be upset about doing it on Valentine's Day. Just sat up here. We just just sat staring at us. Happy Valentine's Day, babe. Yeah. Just give her a little edible arrangement. (laughs) There you go. You are the romantic. I know I am. I, I know. Please don't take offense to this, but I think you're the last person I would take advice from. Well, I, see, I was kind of thought maybe I'd give me an excuse to be my gift to Amy, let her see a podcast. 
oh, live. Letting her come live. We could yeah. we could bring like a I think sit on the floor. A love seat up here. I could sit on the floor. Like a big bean bag, yeah. maybe, and just yeah. Let them hang out under that camera. And yeah. That's our gift to you. That's our gift to you. <laughs> so you go. get to the sit only there one. and watch us. Yeah. Maybe next year. Oh my goodness. Oh, Let's not do that. I I rather enjoy the relationship I'm in. So okay. All right. All right. So we'll keep it there. So I try to help. <laughs> All right. All right.